contacted me through Facebook and it, you know, told me about uh, our guest tonight. And she's actually a psychic medium as well. Um, and she runs a group on Facebook where they do some amazing work where she works with uh, family members or people who have lost loved ones and she delivers messages for them. Uh, and, you know, giving readings myself, uh, for so many years, I will tell you there's, you know, nothing more rewarding, I think, than to be able to help somebody who is troubled or mourning or just grieving so, you know, tremendously over the loss of, you know, somebody that they love. And sometimes, you know, getting a very special message from them uh, makes all the difference in the world. So tonight we're going to be talking about my guest. You know, personal journey. As we know, as, as many of us are have psychic abilities, you know, uh, getting into the paranormal or, you know, doing whatever it is that we, we do in this field is usually uh, brought on by our own personal experiences. And I got to talk a little bit with my guest last night, and it was actually, you know, uh, really amazing. She's got a, a very interesting Story and even what made me love her even more is, you know, like myself, everything that she, you know, um, all of these readings that she does, she does for free, you know, so it's just out of the goodness of her heart and, and to really help people, and everybody knows how much I love that, so uh, we're going to be talking about that, we're going to be actually probably even hear from a, a few people who have had readings with her, she's actually not, you know, uh, just a psychic medium, she also does uh, angel readings, she does, um, Reiki, she's a Reiki master, you know, very, very well-rounded. But, you know, I definitely can say that much. And so I think it's going you know, to be a great show. Uh, I unfortunately, due to technical difficulties, which is why we're going starting just a little bit later than uh, normal, uh, we're going to, you know, hope that we can do everything and uh, not have any technical problems as usual because... I am, I was up in the mountains, and so we couldn't get my audio to come through, so I had to come down the mountain so that I could find a spot to park and do the show. So we are doing <laughs> kind of uh, on the fly uh, remotely. So uh, I apologize to anybody that I cannot um, actually be able to uh, talk to you and chat tonight. Uh, we will still, I'm sure, have, you know, Renee and all of our regulars in the chat room. Uh, please welcome all of our uh, guest friends into the chat room as well. Make them feel welcome. Uh, everybody knows the call-in number. If not, they're all over uh, social media. You know, pick it and, and feel free to call in. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and uh, I just want to go on a few topics here before we start with my guests. And maybe actually we'll talk to my guests about this as well, uh, you know, once we get her um, on the line, uh, we get her interview started. But um, recently, and they talked about this the other night on, on uh, The Darker Side of the Paranormal, but it's been recently brought to my attention that a, another uh, local group out here had started a mentoring program. Now, by all means, I'm all about mentoring children with abilities, helping them, things like that. But part of the problem I have is that the person that is mentoring has never mentored anybody or been mentored herself and, you know, just kind of came into her abilities recently. Um, the second issue I have with it is, you know, at TPRS, my group, we do mentoring of children and, you know, through adults. But one of the things is that the children, you know, we basically are teaching them, you know, about their abilities, how to control them, how to better connect with them, things like that. We don't take them out and teach them to investigate, things like that. Now, we do have a teenage, you know, uh, division. And, you know, if they're interested in, you know, investigating as they get, you know, older uh, with the permission of their, you know, parent, then um, at the end of the program, the teen program, uh, we'll take them out, you know, with us. But we are talking about young children, and I'm talking probably, you know, seven, eight years old to maybe 10, 11. And, you know, for me, seeing and working with so many children that have abilities and, you know, they have really no idea about all of it, and then you 
turn around and, you know, you're out there taking them out to investigate, to me is just very reckless because, you know, being that young, you know, having them interact, um, especially when you're working with them on their abilities, uh, could definitely make them, you know, a target. So I, I'm, you know, not really really happy about, you know, all of that. But, you know, I wanted to get, you know, some other people's opinions. So what I'd like you to do is to go on the Paranormal Face uh, Connections Facebook page, um, or you can go on mine. I'm going to post it on both. And I want the question um, is going to be, uh, do you think that, you know, uh, young children should be out investigating? And I am sure that I am going to get a whole lot of interesting uh, comments on this one, but let's, you know, let's see what we can get. So, all right, so we are going to go ahead and uh, introduce my guest, and so tonight it is Alexis Alexandra, and so Alexis, as I said, is a psychic medium. She does an angel therapy as well as she's a Reiki master, and she helps her clients by connecting them with their loved ones in spirit and gives them a message from the other side. So, um, are you are you there, Alexis? Yes, ma'am, I am. How are you doing, Christina? And thanks for I having me on the show. Good. Thank you so much for coming on. I know this is like your your radio debut. You were, <laughs> were kind of nervous about being on, but you know, I, I assured you that, you know, it, it'll be fine. I mean, the, the great thing about, you know, my listening audience and my callers and things like that, is, you know, we're all like-minded people. And so, you know, that's why they enjoy the show so much is that, you know, it, it is nice to, you know, kind of uh, exchange uh, our different stories with each other, and it, you know, kind of makes you feel that you know you're not alone, don't you think? Oh yes, I really enjoyed it, especially when I was told I was supposed to contact you and talk to you about this. And when you told me that you really enjoyed listening to, you know, my story when I was growing up and stuff like that, I, it makes me feel good because you know, for so long I couldn't talk to anybody about it, and um, you know, it's just it's just different. It's Different when you read to people, then, uh, and, and they don't have a clue what we do. It's different than talking to others that have the same ability. Correct. Yeah, and they don't question you at all. They don't look at you crazy. It's just like it makes all the sense in the world to them. Right, right, yeah. right. It's just a normal thing, and that's what I like about it. And, uh, you know, I live in a community where everything like this is hush hush, and which I dislike about, but, you know, that's why I come here and talk to, you know, and try to help people out on my Facebook page. Yeah, you know, and I, I, I think that it's a shared, you know, um, concern among many people with abilities, you know, that although the paranormal field itself, you know, has exploded with the interest, people are talking about it more, they're sharing their stories, people are talking about, yeah. you know, everything that they've experienced. We also have to remember that although we are, it is at a time that is changing, there are still many locations and rural areas and, you know, uh, kind of like the Bible Belt areas and things where this is still very much taboo to be talking about, right? Exactly. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, we, we got called fakes. We got called uh, devil worshippers. I mean, all kinds of stuff just because yes. we're trying to help people out. Um, you know, there's a lot of them that bash you because you're a psychic or a medium or both. And, yes. you know, it's just an, a, a God-giving ability that people don't understand that are narrow-minded, that don't understand what our gift is all about. And it's not like I'm asking anything for it. I, you know, I like it that you work with children, which I work with children, too. Which they're not psychics, but I do the bully programs and the, you know, stranger dangers. I'm very much involved with the community. But this is something that I felt I needed to do because I know when I heard my father talking to me when he passed away, the day they, you know, put him in the ground, I fell asleep. I'm from Italy, and I was raised in Germany. And uh, I was here in the United States. I couldn't go to a funeral. It was devastating, just absolutely devastating. But when I laid down and I fell asleep after, you know, crying myself to sleep, I heard my father clearly say, look behind the old chair. It sounded like there was a twilight zone. You know how the, those old FM radio, you know, that weird yeah. sound? It makes? Yeah. And then he would pop in, look behind the old chair. And I kept saying, Papa, what old chair? He, he wouldn't say anything, but his voice.
voice was clear, and I knew he was well. When I woke up after that, I felt like, oh, my God, you know, he's okay. He talked to me. Because before that, he was a vegetable. He had a cardiovascular disease, uh, Alzheimer's. I mean, he couldn't talk, you know. He just mumbled. It was horrible. Right. I listened to him on the phone. So when I heard my father... And I woke up, and I looked behind every old chair that I had, and I couldn't find anything. So I called Italy, my mom, and I said, Mom, I know you're going to think I'm crazy, and you know what I can do, because she knows, my family knows. I said, do you have an old chair? Which my parents moved from Germany down to Italy, uh, and they were only there like two years uh, after my dad had to retire. So... Uh, Due to his illness, he and my mom says, what do you mean, old chair? And I says, okay, dad talked to me in, in my dreams. I want you to know. You know, uh, he wanted me to know to look behind the old chair. And my mom says, we don't have the old chairs. We bought all new furniture. And I'm like, mom, please listen to me. So finally, she she screamed. She was like, oh, my God. And I says, what, mom? And she was like, the day your father died, your brother had my brother had um, my dad in his arms, you know, and, and just sobbing when he finally, you know, sit down. And when he sat down, this little key fell out of uh, the back of the, the chair. This is the key of the safety deposit box of my parents. That's where all the house seats are, the, you know, passport, their important paperwork. He right. wanted to make sure to tell my mom, to tell me, to tell my mom, look behind the old chair, because she was going crazy. She was looking for the deeds. She was looking for everything. You know when somebody dies, you right. know, the, the poor widow has to do so much. And, and it's just crazy. But when... You know, that happened. I knew my dad was in a safe place. I mean, this is just one of many, you know, things that I went through as a, you know, psychic medium. And a lot of people don't, you know, some of them say, oh, I don't believe in dreams. I do believe in dreams. They're there for us. You know, it's a message. It's a message. Right. Everybody has this ability. You know that. It's just a lot of people don't work on that ability. And a lot of people never, you know, wake up and do it. So I was gifted very, very young since I was a little girl, and I told you already the other story. Do you want me to tell you uh, tell the story again about the cemetery? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. So I was about seven, eight years old. We were, you know, playing outside and stuff like that, and my friend and I, Colin is her name, and um, at night I would go to bed, and I always sleep with my nightlight on, and I always get spooked and all that stuff. I mean, because it's okay if I know they're there, but if I know they're not there, and I mean, they startle you, you know, if they come from behind, or all of a sudden you hear somebody screaming, you you just know, you know, there's somebody there. Well, I was very young, and, and I always had this coming to me, you know, spirits coming to me, and I saw this male figure standing right in front of me. He had a black jacket on, you know, black pants. It was dark, and um, he had a patch on his arm, and I didn't know what that meant. And he had others, but they would always just stand behind him and just, you know, look and sobbing, and they were not happy. These spirits were not happy. I was really scared. I told them to go away. I didn't know what they wanted, and he kept saying, help me, help me. And that's all he would say, help me. So... You know, I always told him to go away. <laughs> it was just, you know, as a little child, when you don't understand, nobody's explaining to you. To me, it was normal, but not at night. Do you follow what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It was just crazy. And then um, so I would go back to sleep, and I would dream about the cemetery, you know, like uh, tombstones and, you know, all kinds of stuff, everything. And I had a lot of this. I mean, even younger than that, I had these deja vus all the time. And I would, you know drink something, and then I would be right there the next day or maybe weeks later. But I was like, I know I've been here. Well, these dreams wouldn't quit, and they would come almost every night. I couldn't tell you how long, maybe a week, maybe two. Help me, help me, help me, you know. And, and every time I kept telling them to go away because I was scared. Well, one day my friend Kyle and I, we were playing, and uh, we walked, you know, behind the brushes, you know, you know, kids nowadays, they play with Xbox, Nintendo, and stuff. Well, when I was younger, we played outside, you know, yeah, <laughs> so air and all that good stuff. So I would, we were playing and, you know, having sticks in our hand and just slapping the grass, the high, tall grass, and I tripped. I fell down. I stumbled my toe, and um, 
my friend Calvin asked me, what did you do? You know, something like that. And I'm like, I hurt myself, you know, because I was bleeding. My toes were bleeding. I had sandals on. And um, as I ripped the grass open, I wanted to see what kind of rock that was. And it was the same stone. And it was a tombstone. Now I know it was a tombstone that I saw in my dreams. And we found four of them. Um, and it had the same symbol on that tombstone that I saw on that gentleman, on that spirit, uh, male spirit. Um, of course, we went home. I told my dad, and my dad says, well, I told you not to play by the cemetery, which a lot of kids would play by the cemetery, not in the cemetery, right. uh, just outside the cemetery. You know, it's just something to do, I guess. <laughs> right. Small town. So, um, and then I explained to him what I saw. I had to draw a picture of the simple that I saw, which, you know, seven, eight-year-old can't draw that good. Uh, he took me to the Catholic preacher. My, my family's Catholic, just to let you know. Yeah. And um, he took me to the father, and um, I had to wait outside in the car, and they both came, and I had to tell them where I found it. I had to show it to them, and I did. And when they got there, you know, they ripped more of the grass off and stuff like that. And then I was explained later that, you know, the symbol was for the Jewish family. It was a Jewish family, and uh, I guess... You know, it was like that night, the the spirit came back to me, and all he said was, thank you, thank you. That's all. It was just, he wanted his, you know, family to be found. I mean, it was just, you know, after, obviously, the war and all that stuff. But I I felt like they, they were not in, in peace till you know, they were, that people would know that, you know, the grave is there, and no one ever took care of that grave, you know, and it was four graves. So... Um, that was, you know, some of the stories that I have to tell. And, uh, so those are so, uh, they're so interesting. They're so interesting because, you know, again, everybody has, you know, their own personal, you know, experiences. But so many of us experience a lot of the same stuff, you know. So right. it's like, you know, hearing somebody else talk about it, you know, I, myself, I can see spirits. I can, you know, communicate with them, uh, Something that was interesting to me is uh, I've only been able to see only one of my family member who died, which was my grandfather, who was was really like my first. You are so lucky because I can't. I cannot see my family member. I heard my father, and that was it. I wish I could talk to my father. I wish a lot of people say, you know, you're lucky, you're a medium. You can talk to your own family. I'm like, no, I'm no, not. No, it doesn't work that way. And I am very hard to that's read. the part. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Most of us are, you know, and that's the yeah. that's thing. We learn to to hide our our yeah. abilities and these things for so long that you know yeah. we can we can blend in with you know pretty much any any group, and you would you never know unless we tell you. Um, right. It, it can like can anybody reach you, Christina? Because no one can read me. I have some. Well, you know, they say some stuff here and there, and that's fine, but. No one can read me, and it's so frustrating because I want to read him too. You know, it's just yes. crazy. So I, I yes. would love to have somebody read me, but it's just crazy. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's a, that's the thing with me too is that uh, I, I've had people who have been, you know, accurate in some things, not so accurate in others. You know, right. right. And again, I know how you know this this all works, but it is a little hard because you give readings all the time to everybody else, and sometimes you just want to be able to have that yourself. Right. Um, and, you know, we're only humans. Even though we're psychic mediums, we're only humans. We can only, we're the messengers in between. That's what medium means. Absolutely. And we can only give you what the spirit gives us. You know, a lot of people call us frauds. I mean, I know others are out there, big names, they were called frauds and cheaters and all that stuff. But people don't understand. We're just the middleman. You can have all kinds of stuff on Facebook. I won't snoop around your Facebook. I can snoop around. I don't have enough time. My group has over 5,600 people, which it just started. I just started this group mid-January of this year. And it's just overwhelming the way people come in, you know. Um, sometimes there's people that are not happy with the readers. Now, I have several readers. I have Shirley. She's a reader. A reader. Um, Deborah is a reader. Um, Alana is a reader. Phyllis and Mandy, they're my, uh, they, they watch the room and they're doing a wonderful job. But you know, sometimes readers don't get a shot on right away. And right away, they get called fake or something yes. like that. 
But yes. it's wrong. It's wrong to judge people like that because we only pass on messages that the Spirit gives us. We can't help it if the Spirit is not getting the correct color or something like that. You know what I mean? With names, sometimes I can get them, sometimes I can't. So it's right. just, um, you know... I can explain you know, to everybody as well that, you know, the information that we get never makes any sense to us because exactly. it is not meant for us. You know, exactly. and it's either going to resonate with somebody and then and it's going to make sense or it's not. I mean, that we can. Right. Well, right. And, a lot of people, right. and a lot of times people are, are expecting that everything that you're going to give them is something that's happened in the past that they can connect with them immediately. Exactly. But that's not I mean, the case. You know, a lot right. of times things are going to happen in the future. And I'm sure you, like I do too, like people will get a reading and, you know, you'll have everything except for like a couple things. And, you know, they'll get off the phone and then a couple days or weeks or months later they'll call you right. back. And, you yes. know, I'm so sorry yes. I doubted you. <laughs> yes, and that's correct. And, you know, we, we get the, the way we read in our group, Christina, is they have to send us a picture. I don't look. I don't, I'm not one of those psychics that can look in the eye and, ooh, I know, you know, exactly what you're thinking, whatever. I just do it whatever, you know, like I, I have it in my head. It's like, and I'm not a schizophrenic or anything like that. It's just like, I probably right. some voices in my head. And I see flashes of, you know, how the person, you know, looks like. Or, you know, and sometimes they're right there. They're just standing there. But the thing that I always, I'm always surprised when people, you know, they have to send in these photos with the year that they're, you know, passed away and who these people are to them. Because, and I'm telling you why I do this, because I don't want some, you know, a stranger posting a picture of somebody that just died and, and, and they saw it in the paper. Do you follow what I'm saying? You can yes. go to a funeral home and get these pictures and say, I want to know what happened to this guy. So I want to know if there is a relation in some kind of way. And uh, it sounds, you know, sad that some people have to do that just to be nosy. There, There's a lot of nosy people around. <laughs> but yeah. uh, the, the thing is that, the reason why we do this is just because we want to know if we're talking to the right spirit. This is why I asked the picture. Not that because, you know, I want to see how he looked like or, you know, I want to make something up about this person. You can't make this stuff up, Christina. Right. You can't. Oh, I in a way, you know, I, you know, I met some, you know, they say they were mediums and, you know, and I'm like, okay. And I'm not going to bash nobody down. It's not my place to bash anybody right. down. I refuse to do that. But I met some darn good mediums, and, you know, and, and I watch them when they read in my group and stuff, and it's like, wow, you know. And uh, But they still get bashed. You see what I mean? It's just, yeah, I don't it's, know. It's Sometimes. sad because the thing is is that, you know, you're you're offering, these people are offering, you know, these readings for time. time. And, yeah, you know, time. it does take a lot of time because I actually, there was a couple other groups, you know, over the last year or so that have been created and they contacted me, you know, and asked me to come and be a reader for them. And I did. And there would just be so many people. And mm -hmm. if you don't get to them immediately, I mean, they can be very, very mean, you know. Right. And, oh, it's, that's the truth. I don't know if. Oh, you're absolutely correct. And it's like, you know, I posted my picture two days ago. I posted my picture earlier. Why do not I get it read? You know, it's like we can't just order these spirits. It's not pizza hub. You can't just call and say, hey, you want to come over? I want to chat with you. It doesn't work like that. And I, we try to tell people that all the time. And, you know, some get upset. Some understand after the explanation. Um, it just... Life goes on. That's all I got to say. I mean, we're doing this out of the goodness of the heart. We don't have to do this. And if people don't like it, why do they come in our room? Why do they want to talk to a medium or psychic if they're not happy with what they're getting? You know what I mean? I mean, if if you're going to a fake to a cold reader, you know, and you know that person is a cold reader, that is your personal choice. That's your own problem. You cannot judge every, you know, everybody because one person is making a mistake of being a cold reader or, you know, a fake like they call people. So, um, I don't know. It just, I enjoy what I'm doing. I'm doing this because it's, it's not like I'm gaining anything. I'm like for hours on the internet. I don't go to bed till, you know, three, four o'clock in the morning, but as long as I can make somebody happy and talk to them, you know. And sometimes, you know, they say, well, I don't know anything about that. Well, then, like you said, 
they text me the next day or, you know, they chat me uh, the next day and say, you know what, I just asked my mom and this really happened. How would I know? It's not on Facebook. There's there's so many things that you can make up. There's no way. Um, you know, and we always tell people, you know, make your Facebook private so nobody can snoop around. We always tell people. And um, how much, you know, I... And I do, and I, you know, I go to the beauty shop and I talk to people. I never used to do that because I didn't want people to think I'm cuckoo because, you know, people say right. you're cuckoo yeah, when you do that. Totally. So, but yeah. now it's like, I want to do it. I don't care. I'm helping this person out. If I'm seeing your grandma right next to you, I'm going to tell you, Christina, your grandma is right next to you. You know, and, uh, and if they, you know, and after a while, I'm going to say, I know you probably think I'm not, but I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm seeing. You know, it's your choice if you want to believe me or not, and usually they believe. Well, and, exactly, uh, exactly. And that's one of the things, you know, uh, I, I've had the exact same, you know, issue as well with, you know, any time that you, you know, uh, have psychic abilities, you know, there's always going to be people out there that are going to call foul and, and whatever. Right. You know, the thing is, is that, and I think that, you know, for most of the, the true psychics that I meet, you know, it gets to a point that you really don't care because those aren't the people who need you anyway, you know. Exactly. So if they don't want right. to believe in, in what you're doing, so be it. So many people want to break their neck and try to do everything they can to discredit people, including myself, you know, and, and it's like, for what? I mean, there's still right. going to be people that need help. You know, nobody's getting scammed because, right. you know, this, this is being done for free for people. Exactly. And it's exactly. helping them heal. So if people exactly. can't understand that, so be it. it it's okay. Exactly. You know, think of me as a fraud, whatever. I've got hundreds yeah. of, you know, people that, you know, have written testimonials that, you know, will have been very clear that the information that, you know, I've gotten and I've read, you know, some of the testimonials that were sent to me, you know, about you, um, that were, you know, again, it, this is information that they get that is not public. Right. This is information exactly. that they are getting that nobody else would know. Like, there's just no way you could go on any site and find this stuff out. And, you know, it's unfortunate that you, you have to go to a level where, you know, it is like that because there are so many people who do fake but, again, you know, we're here to help a very specific amount of, you know, uh, people, and that's who we'll focus on. I mean, you've got right. 5,000 people in your group. I mean, that's that's amazing. Yeah, so. and, and they're keep coming, and that's nice. It's just, you know, we, we don't have that many readers, so people need to take time. You know, it's just, you know, I had two near-death experience. I had an open-heart surgery in 2000. I had triple bypass on, and... Uh, you know, and then this past uh, September, I had seven cents put in my heart, and both times I was out. I was done. Um, and, you know, what I saw while I was gone, I keep saying I was gone, you know, it was amazing. And then when all this was done, I asked, you know, I prayed, and I said, God, show me what you want me to do. And I never had a clue how to open up a group or nothing, Christina, and bang, 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 even the name. I mean, it was like right there, right there. I mean, everything, it was so amazing. I'm like, okay, this is what I need to do. This is what he wants me to do, and I'm going to keep on doing it. No, that's right. And, you know, I I'm, was able to get access, and I'm in chat, and, you know, I'm seeing in, you know, chat there was somebody, I guess, who was, you know, not satisfied with a reading that you got. But, again, this comes with the territory. You know, exactly. just because somebody, you know, isn't happy with a reading does not mean that a psychic is a fake. It means right. that you already had a preconceived, you know, information that you wanted, and because that information was not addressed or given to you. Because I've had people in the past who've done this, and they said, okay, I'm going to have a psychic reading. And they'll say, okay, so-and-so, whoever, you know, mom, whoever they want to talk to, right? And they'll right. say, okay, grandma or, or mom, uh, when you do the reading, when we do the reading today with this person, I want, I'm going to ask a very specific I know exactly question. what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> and I want you to have them give me the, the answer, okay? Yes, and exactly. You do the reading and, you know, you give them every other bit of information except for it, per se, that yes, one. Exactly. <laughs> And because you didn't answer that one, although you've get, gotten all kinds of other stuff, although they don't get the information that was already preconceived of what they wanted an answer on, then yeah. all of a sudden you become a fake and a scammer. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. it's, 
it's very sad. And unfortunately, you know, it is the kind of the, the cross that, you know, us as, as psychic mediums have to bear because right. there are so many people that do not have, you know, personal experiences. And until you have your own personal experience, it, it really is hard to convince a skeptic. Right. Because people want to see proof. Yeah, so. you're, you're absolutely right. And I get this in the room, too, you know. There's people, they post a photo of a great, great grandpa. Can you tell me something about him? Well, I could tell you all kinds of stuff about him, but do you know what he's talking about? You weren't even alive yet. Right. You know, and, and right. it's just frustrating sometimes. And I totally agree with you, Christina. It's just you know, sometimes it is frustrating. We are trying so hard to help people out. We even not, we're the reader in my group. You know, they're not asking for, for anything. I'm not asking for anything. This is just out of the goodness of our heart. And you know, if people are not satisfied, why even be in that group? You know, when one leaves, I tell you, I noticed that when one leaves, or we have to ban one, ten more come in and they need our Absolutely. help, and we are there to help. And that's all. Absolutely. Somebody is not happy with my reading. So be it. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great way, and it's the best way to do it because, you know, unfortunately there are a lot of people that, you know, you know, search out psychics just to get information, you know, and unfortunately yes. they get a lot of conflicting information because they go right. to a whole lot of people who claim to be psychic. You know, when right. you start getting a whole bunch of different opinions or a whole bunch of different messages, you know, they may not all mesh. They may not, you know, uh, all be true. I, I mean, it's very hard to decipher, but there are people out there that are, you know, generally out there only to try to put down people who are, are helping yeah. others. And right. it's, it's, it's so yeah. sad. Right. And, and, you know, I know it's, uh, I've been talking about my group. Not that I'm promoting it. Yes, I am. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes. But, yes. So listen, though, awesome. I interview my readers. There, no one is allowed to read in that group till I interview. I personally interview all yes. of the ones that claim to be psychics. And just by talking to them, I can figure it out. I know. I mean, the job that I used to have, and I'm not going to talk about the job I used to have, but I could look in people's eyes when I interviewed them. I could look in that eyes, I'm sorry, in their face, and I could tell if they're lying to me or not. And it just, and that's how it is when I'm behind the screen. I want to be left alone, and then I start typing, and then I figure these people out. And, right. but, um, you know, and, and then I show them pictures, and, and of course, I know everything about these people and the pictures that have passed. Or they're still alive, and then I say, please read to me. I would like you, you know, out of, you know, maybe five, I want you to get at least three, you know, because I can't pressure the readers. And then right. if um, I chose, choose that reader, they're going to be on a 60 day. I know it sounds like this is like work-related, all that stuff, you know, like a factory or something. No, they have a 60-day probation. If I'm not satisfied, right. yeah, if I'm not satisfied that, and then a lot of people are getting hurt, I will tell them, I'm sorry, you know, you're a great person. It was fun. Oh, they're nice. It's fun. Right. Right. You know, I can't bash them. I will not bash anybody. I will not. I mean, that's just me. That's uh, important. I, yeah, that's important. Yes, I usually pray and I'm like, ask them, Michael, you know, protect me because I'm sure they're cursing me out right now. So, but it's just the point that I admire everybody that is a psychic medium. And, you know, it is just, it's a totally different world. It's not like we're living in a different world, but we live, I almost put I like a different world. <laughs> but I know, <laughs> I know, but we, we live in between. Time. To me, it's like we live in between worlds. You know, if I right. step to the left, I'm on earth. I step to, you know, it's just, it's just amazing. The people that I met, is just, I just love them all. So I'm just, I guess I'm a lover, not a hater. Well, you know, there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that. And, you know, a lot of actually, a lot of uh, psychic mediums, you know, end up, you know, we are very caring people. And, yeah. you know, we usually end up in careers where, you know, we're helping other people. And so yeah. we're very drawn to that naturally. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, when we, when, you know, um, have the opportunity to say, okay, there's a need and, you know, people – need our help, you know, we want to, to do that. And, again, for the majority of us, you know, um, there are many people out there that, that do charge for reading. And, you know, I hear the excuse more and more now that, you know, hey, with the way the economy is, you have to work with the tools that you have. And if you have a trade, you know, just like if you were a, 
electrician or a plumber, you know, you you would help people, but, you know, you're going to charge if, if you have that talent. And, you know, so I don't fault anybody for doing what they have to do. Um, right. But for me, myself, I can never charge. Like, I don't feel that that was what, it, you know, this is about. This is not what it's supposed to be for. You know, I'm like you. I, I come up on random people, and, you know, 20 years ago, I would never, ever do what I do now and walk up and actually, you know, give a reading. And it's funny because the the uh, the Long Island medium, I will tell you, the very first time, and I don't watch too many, you know, paranormal or psychic shows on, on TV. Yeah. yeah. Because they're just so, it's so obscure of what really goes on, you know, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> here's another person trying to tell us how it is and we live it. So, but right. I will tell you, for me, she right. seemed to be so very much like me, other than the fact that I can usually see who I'm talking to. Um, and that's, opposed that's to the only one. Just... That's the only one that I was watching. Um, I mean, I, I watched others too a long time ago, you know, and they right, come right. out and stuff. But she's crazy. I love her. And she's Italian. I think I love her even more. I'm just kidding. Yeah, so I'm Italian too. So yes, we all yeah, are very. Maybe that's how we get along. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, you're absolutely right, and that's how I am. I don't know if you sit in front of TV and then they're in it. You know, she's like, I call it interviewing. She's talking to the people and stuff, and I know exactly what they're going to say. You right. know, just, just, I mean, not, you know, spot on on everything, but I just know. It's like, oh, my God, I was right again. And it's just exciting to listen to her, and I know she's doing well, and, you know, and, and she almost gave me the, she gave me encouragement to do this. She yes. really did because yes. I was like, "Whoa, I can't believe they have a meeting. They have somebody like me on TV. They're actually going out to people and talking to people." And I, I really like her. I yeah, really it's like her. real life, you know, like the real. Like right. you can really see that as like a true life. And you know, yeah. I have to take my hat off to her and like bow down yeah. to her because I will tell you, being in the in the public eye myself, um, you know, doing what I do and I lecture and, and all these different things. Um, right. You know, you can get some some pretty you know hard hitting haters out there. You know, oh my gosh, yeah, it can be really you know really tough. And you know, I look at you know uh, out there and I see the kind of hate that she gets because oh, she you know, know it's, it's, it's very media yeah. eyes. Yeah. So of course, yeah. you know her. You know those eyes on her are you know quadruple what time. they are on me. Um, right. And I'm, I think, oh well, think. Thank goodness, but you know she she keeps on going. Like she doesn't care. You know, like we know we know what we do. We know what we're able to do. And I I saw before my laptop uh, lost power. I had also seen somebody uh, in the chat room who had said, you know, uh, that most real psychics don't need um, a picture. And I want to just address that because that is so not true. Okay, first of all. They're psychics, you know, come in all different, you know, uh, size, shapes, and forms. You know, we all have different types of abilities. We are not all, you know, exactly the same. Um, we have similar abilities. Some have more than others. Some are very, you know, new to it all, uh, don't understand much. But most of us read off of energy. And so rather it's if a, uh, say somebody types up a an email message, there are people that can read, you know, uh, based yeah. off of an email message when somebody yeah. puts a question out there. Yeah. There are and other people. people. Go ahead. Go ahead. And just like I said, the only reason we want the pictures is because we want to know who are we talking to? You know as well as I do that sometimes it's, it's not just one spirit coming. Sometimes you have Christ right there. And it's like, okay, which one is your husband now, you know? Unless they tell me, hey, I'm her husband. You know, but you don't, you know, I, you know, if people are very narrow-minded if they say that you don't need a picture, you know, to, to be, a, I mean, a real medium doesn't need a picture. That's fine. You know, I met mediums that touch. In Italy, we have, they call them strega. So we have these ladies, old ladies, they mm -hmm. touch your clothing. They touch, and they want that clothing so they can do a reading on you. Right. Amazing. Right. It's amazing. Or an audience Everybody that you have yes. or something. Yes. Mm -hmm. there's, yeah. there's so many different, you know, like you said, there's so many different, um, you know, types of mediums and psychics and stuff. That's why I say I think it's, I think it's all cool, especially now since I, I'm open you know, in 
think. You know what people say. Right. <laughs> I'm not yes. doing wrong, Christine. I'm helping people. It's not like I'm, I'm asking every vote, 5,000, over 5,000 members, you know, I want 10 bucks or 20 bucks from you for each week. I don't do that. I mean, I right. get more out sometimes because it's too much energy, you know, it just takes yes. me out. And then some worry, you know, hey, what happens to Alexis? Alexis is tired right now, you know. And then, and then some of, you know, the leaders I have are new and they were scared too at first, you know, and, you know, and you're still, you know, but, but they're learning, and that's what I like, and I help them out, and I push them on, and they're just wonderful people, and you, you're you a wonderful person for doing what you're doing. I admire you, and, oh, you know, you. I admire, like I said, I admire everyone that does this and is helping people. Yeah. Well, I like to, you know, I, I like to, on my shows, I like to have, you know, a vast array of, of all different types of topics and subjects and people on my on my show. But, you know, personal right. stories to me are always very important, and especially people who are, you know, um, giving back. And to me, it's, right. that's very, very important, you know, as right. well. And, you know, to, to be able to network with, you know, other like-minded people, you know, again, there's always going to be the negative people out there. And, you know, all we do is, yeah. you know, pray for them or send them positive energy, yeah. you know, because, yeah. you know, if they are that, if they're – their minds are, are are so weak and they are so, you know, angry with the world that they are searching out people who are actually helping others. You know, um, there's something wrong with them, not with us. And, and, you know, we have to remember, you know, the, the negative stuff is always going to try to, you know, pull us away from what we're doing. And I you know, always put roadblocks. You know, if I see someone has this gift, but she or he doesn't want to, you know, just be afraid to show people because, you know how, you know, like you said, we get called all kinds of names and stuff like yes. that. I always try to help them out. I'm like, listen, and, you know, I do my Reiki on them and stuff like that, and I tell them how to open up, and I guide them through everything they need to do. I, you know, since I've been doing this on my Facebook and, you know, even in private and stuff, I met so many nice people and oh, people yes. that were not believers, and they're like, you know, they love me, and they love everybody that does the reading for them in my room. So I'm just grateful that there are good people out there still, and yep. I wish the whole world was good. But, you know, unfortunately, we're always going to have some haters out there and somebody, you know, that wants to fight or bash somebody down, and that's the sad part about it. But, you know what, all we do is spread love. Well, I always tell my admins, you know, pray for them. That's all you can do, pray for them. Yep. Yep, and, you know, and really, and I mean, it is it is amazing, you know, again, the feeling that you get when you have a client who is, you know, either very afraid, is grieving, can't move on, you know, all these different things, and you are able to work with them, and I'm telling you, the energy of gratitude is so strong. Right. Like, it is it overwhelming. Is. And I tell it people, is. you know, all the time, just like you were, were saying, you know, Giving readings is very, very draining on on it is. people who do it. It, it. We have no idea. And the stronger of a psychic you are, and especially if you're, you know, sensitive or you're empathic, things like that, you know, you will pick up on the emotions and, you know, everything that your client's going through. And, I mean, it's literally it's almost like a kryptonite. And although mm-hmm. it is detrimental to our health, we still do it. Because, like, right. we know this is what we're supposed to do. And, you know, my health is not good. And, you know, people now, you know, because I've been doing this for so long, will know that, you know, if I'm gone for a while, that I'm usually something that that what is happening. Is, yeah. And I know I had to step back from, you know, investigations as well. Right. Um, right. Because now we're using a lot of... Uh, psychic mediums in, you know, paranormal investigating because, of course, we can give a lot more information than a bunch of electronics can. Right. Um, But I will tell you, it it is a much more of a draining process than giving a readings is. Right. It is. It's it's something that is, is really, really hard, and, you know, there's just so many different aspects of of what can happen when you're, you know, when you're doing this. It's a very interesting, you know, field, and I think a lot of psychics are, you know, being pulled that way because they experience a lifetime of paranormal activity themselves, and they're thinking, oh, you know, 
uh, I had paranormal activity. And, you know, the majority of them actually have psychic abilities that, you know, um, are either, you know, starting to kind of, you know, activate and they're starting to connect with it for whatever reason. Um, and they don't really understand it, you know. And then once they kind of, like, understand it all, you realize that the fear starts to go away, you know, right. uh, of what you have experiencing. To, right, right. And you have to admit, if the spirit knows that you're, like, fully, I mean, you know, like, a good medium, they, they actually come to you and they just draw and they want you to go and, and you know, pass on the information. Um, Christina, we help so many in our group, all the admins in my group, the readers, even the ladies that do the, just the monitoring, the, the group. We help you. There are so many that want to commit suicide. And it's so yes. sad because, you know, they lost a loved one. But, you know, after talking to us, like, and, and they're still there. They're, they come and visit us just to say hi. And, and, you know, if, I'm getting goosebumps again because it just, you know, I never thought this would be such an impact on someone you know, someone's life, and it's, it's just crazy when, when I hear, you know, one of my admin was, you know, I'm glad they tell me, like, I'm glad you talked to, to her or to him, you know, because he, he just told me, he was PMing me and telling me, you know, he was going to commit suicide that night, you know, I mean, it's just, it, it, I, I'm sorry to say this, but it sucks to live like that, it's, yeah. you know, it's horrible to have, you know, those kind of feelings, and why should I let, you know, I don't care if people call me fake. I don't care. Why should I leave a soul like that to go and commit suicide? I'm not going to do that, Christina. And my right. husband's a really good talker. Phyllis, she can talk your ear off, but she is such a caring person. And she, you know, and she will tell you, you know, and, and she had to deal with people that wanted to commit suicide. And I'm so glad I have really nice ladies, you know, working together with me on with the side. They're, they're really awesome people. Shirley is an amazing talker. And, you know, she just, she knows. She knows. And we have Janelle. Janelle actually wrote a book. I couldn't tell you now what the book's name is. I'm sorry. <laughs> she's in Canada. I'm not promoting. <laughs> but she's from Canada. I have people from all over the world, Africa, England, you know, everywhere, and they come just to get a reading. Australia. I mean, it's just amazing that, you know, I'm glad now that I'm open and, you know, I don't care what people say. And, you know, I came out of the closet, people, and I don't care what anybody thinks. <laughs> Yeah, Before I was yeah. like, oh, I'm going to get fired. <laughs> but yeah, now it's yeah, like, yeah, you're really, yeah, I completely agree with that, too. I mean, it, it is, <laughs> you know, you kind of like, you're right on the fence and like, okay, you know, do you just take the plunge because you know, like, you finally know, like, what you're supposed to be doing. You right. know, it's kind of that epitome, you know, point where, like, you know, you grow up having these abilities and you really, for a long time as a child, really don't know what you're supposed to do with them or what they really are. I mean, I searched for years trying to figure out what the heck I was, you know, because right. psychic was exactly. something I, I definitely knew I wasn't because, right. you know, growing up, a psychic was somebody that had a crystal ball and told everybody they had demons. I know, them. right? So I sure as <laughs> hell was not going to be no damn psychic. So, you know, when I, when I finally, as an adult, I, you know, was, uh, started with a group, they actually, like, pinned this whole thing title of a psychic on me right. and now mind right. you you know i've been doing this now for in the public eye for about 12 years you know like in groups right. and stuff so it's kind of like okay once again you know we still weren't really past the whole psychic thing <laughs> and so i'm like i don't really know if i like this but you know it was like the more i started understanding you know it's like right. you know okay but you know do you get these like dumb questions when people find out you're a psychic because like the my biggest quirk and i say this all the time on my show that people are probably sick of hearing it but every time i mean at least 98 percent of the time if i meet somebody that doesn't know me and mm -hmm. you know somebody will introduce me and they'll say oh you know it's christina george you know she's a psychic medium and um they'll turn around and they always give me this really strange look where like their eyebrow <laughs> one eyebrow kind of like goes up and they're like a psychic, huh? You know, and yeah. I'm like, yeah. yeah. And then they'll turn around and say, so you're a psychic. So, okay, if you're a psychic, what am I thinking right now? Yes. Oh, my gosh, and, I get that all the time. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, I don't know because I'm not a mind reader, but I might be able to give you a message <laughs> from the other side. Like, you know, right. it's, it's so strange how people think they know and really have no idea what, 
what we really do. And again, you know, um, psychic abilities vary from person to person. And, you know, we all have that. I mean, I have people that say, you know, I wish I was, you know, more connected and, you know, uh, with my abilities and things like that. And, I mean, absolutely there are plenty of things that you can do to, you know, connect and, and better understand your abilities. Um, right. We see it all the time. But, you know, for those people who are just so completely have got themselves brainwashed that, you know, none of this stuff, you know, happens, you know, well, they can go live in that world because I, you know, for the first, you know, half of my life, you know, grew up believing that, you know, like, what the hell is going on with me that I live, like, in these two realities? And I surely knew I was not crazy. But, of course, growing up in the Catholic, you know, uh, faith, too, I was pretty much, you know, put out to be crazy. Uh, right. So <laughs> you're it's very right. interesting how it plays out. Now, right. for you, um, did you, like, in your teenage years, you know, did did you notice, like, a change? Because for me, like, up up until, like, my teenage years, everything was kind of, like, very calm and I was never afraid. Right. It wasn't until, like, the teen years. And I ended up with an attachment. And I'll tell you, it was, like, the worst worst thing ever. Right. And right. did you experience when, that, too? Right. When, when I was a teenager, you know, of course, you know, you're, you're, you're dating and all that stuff. All right. And this is, like, in the back burner. But... What happened to me was, and oh, I, I don't recommend it, never do it. I was 14, 15, something like that. I did the Ouija board. Never, ever you. do that. I oh, know. my God. I had a male named Heine. He's supposed to be like 50 years old, but whatever. However old he was, he was attached to me, and that's what scared me. And I'm like, <gasps> I'm not going to do it no more. So, and then in my later years, I was 19, 20. I was 19 when I came to the United States. That's when it kicked back in again, and I, you know, I, I got pregnant when I was 21. I was married. I got pregnant when I was right. 21, 22. I had a baby. But while, before I got pregnant, I dreamed of a white, small coffin. But when I open up the coffin, like, a, when I say white, small coffin, I mean a baby, you know, infant coffin. Right. When I open up the coffin, I saw my mother in there, and I stepped into the living, you know, books out of me. And, um, right. well, you know what? And it was like, not even two weeks later, I found out I was pregnant. Oh, and, and the thing is, uh, I had, I had that small coffin, and there was four candles on that coffin. And when I opened up the coffin, that's when I saw my mom. So, you know, the four in Italy, the number four is always associated with death because they're the ones that, the pole barrier, you know, they carry right. the fire. And I'm like, oh my God, my mom's going to die. So I called my mom. I mean, I would call every day. My phone bill was like, oh, tremendously high. So right. Because I was scared. And it was just, you know, and it was a trauma for me. That dream was like, oh, you know, it just killed me. And I don't want my mom to die. And that's when, you know, my dad passed away. That was really devastating. And um, I have so many stories to tell you, and I don't know how long you want to keep talking with me. <laughs> but, you know, that's when I found out I was pregnant, and I think, you know, the coffin, I, I associate the coffin as a childbirth always. You know, somebody mm -hmm. dies, I mean, somebody is going to be born. Correct. And correct. if somebody, if I see a dream, you know, that somebody is having a baby, that means somebody is getting married. That's for how I associate the things because it works for me. And it happened to me. Right. So, but yeah. I think that that's for most of us is how it is. It's kind of like a trial and error thing, you know, and it's like we, yeah. we eventually learn to connect the dots. And so we understand, like, the energy and certain things. Like, sometimes I will have, you know, visions and I'll be wide awake. Sometimes I'll have pre-cog dreams where, you know, I'm asleep and, you know, it's usually of, like, destruction or something. And depending on, you know, um, the type of feeling I get from it, I will know immediately if it's about to happen. And I've been, I mean, I've gone on Facebook and posted, you know, 24, 48 hours right before and, you know, and then right. boom, it's happened. So, right. uh, you know, you, you learn over the years to understand that energy and what you're getting. But, but, you know, when you're growing up and you don't really have any direction, you don't really know what's going on with you, you know, it, it, you kind of like just have to learn to figure it all out on your own without any, or any help, you know. So right. it, it's very easy to misinterpret the information that you're 
you're getting. You know, I have had dreams, too, where, you know, somebody I really cared about, you know, died. And then I would, like, call, and it'd be, like, 3 o'clock in the morning, and I'd be in tears. And I, now I'd freak them out, and they can't go back to sleep because I had this vision that they died. And they're thinking, oh, God, you know, she just <laughs> foresaw my death. And I'm just like, oh, crap, you know. <laughs> what do you do? I know. Go back to sleep. It's just, you know, I just uh, it's just me. I know. I get that all the time. I call people, like, really, Alexis, like, you woke me up because of this? And I'm like, yeah. yeah. Exactly. But, you know, and then when you think like, about it, you're I, like, yeah. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know, know if people to be told. That. I don't know if this ever happened to you, but to me, I was sick. I, you know, I've been here since 1989 um, in the United States, and I only saw my parents three times. You know, I oh. went through a bad divorce. I couldn't afford to go home. I had two children. Uh, you know, I was a single mother, and I had to work a few jobs. It was just, uh, oh. just, this is where everything was like a standstill. You know, right. all of a sudden, I couldn't get that. I mean, I was always wondering, why Why can't I not, you know, meditate anymore? My mind was just going and going and going. It was just stress. Yes. And um, I was so homesick, and I wanted to be with, you know, my family at home. And, um, you know, I, I was laying there in bed, and I went to sleep, and I actually saw myself getting out of my body. And I was in my parents' house. And I knew exactly what my mom was cooking. And I, you know, I was like floating. I swear, I know you're going to think I'm crazy, but I'm not. But I saw myself floating. And I was there, I don't know how long I was there, I couldn't tell you. But it was such a great feeling. Like I said, I was really homesick, still am. But I was really, really, really homesick then. But when I did that, and don't ask me how I did it, my body just, you know, wanted to go. Yeah, were, you, like were you awake or were you asleep when you did that? No, I was asleep. I was sitting there after projecting. Yes. I was totally, yes. you know, out of it, and I knew exactly what my mom was wearing and everything. Well, the next thing my mom called and told me she received my card because I was, you know, send mom pictures with the babies and, and, and right. stuff like that. And I was like, Mom, were you wearing this and this and that? Were you cooking this and this and that? And she was like, Yes. Who called you? <laughs> right. Right. Somebody called me. I saw it, Mom. She was like, Oh, stop that. And I'm like, Mom, I'm serious. Well, Stuff like that. I, I have that. All the yeah. time. All the time. It's just like, and I'm not asking for it. It just happens. I don't know if I'm open to all the things. I, you know, I just don't know. Well, right. a lot of times you unconsciously are asking. You know, when you're going through those times where, you know, you're missing somebody or whatever, you know, right. it's like you, your abilities are so strong that, you know, you can kind of, pop in and out. The only thing is that if you're going to be after projecting, you also, just like with anything else, you want to learn to have control over it. Because um, there's and nothing have, worse than to pop out and, like, not understand how to pop back in or, you know, different yeah. different things, you know. And then but, this happened to me three times, but I didn't go home. You know, just one time I went home. <laughs> right, and went to other places. Yeah, but when I, you know, even after the surgery, I had a, a surgery and I was in so much pain. And again, I saw myself, you know, out of my body and I was in so much pain. And when I got out of my body, I didn't have the pain. This is why I tell people I know how it feels when, you know, spirits go to heaven or to paradise or wherever they're going because they feel wonderful. They don't feel the oh, yeah. pain anymore. A lot of parents, you know, they ask, that, did my son suffer? And I guarantee you, they're not suffering when you're out of the flesh. I mean, you're yeah, going to think yeah. about it. When, when, we, when we get out of our body, it's energy. So there's nothing attached, no blood, no veins, no, you know, uh, nerves and all that stuff. That's what gives us the pain, you know. Right. So when, right. when we're out with we're spirit, with the angels, that's when, you know, they're not suffering. I tell, I tell people that all the time. And plus, you know, the spirits tell me, you know, tell my mom I didn't suffer. I know that's what she's been, you know, she's been struggling with that. And it's a wonderful thing. I know it's sad when we do somebody because we want to grab and hug them and kiss them and just, you know, see their smiling and everything. But, you know, they're right there with you. They're, they're watching us. They're right. watching us. They're right there with us. And it's, it's just such an amazing thing, and and I know. I mean, I was sad when my dad died. Of course, I was. You know, every, it's a human and it's a human. It's a human emotion, and, and you're going right. to go through that when yeah. you're in human form. Exactly. So you, right. But when I heard my dad, you know, telling me, you know, look behind, I, I heard him so clear, Christina, and I was like, oh my god, my dad just talked to me. I mean, it was just, it's just such an amazing thing, and you know, um, well, I, I, I want to. 
that's, that reminds me um, of what I was telling you about, you know, my grandfather. You know, I had seen spirits my whole life. I had never seen anybody, you know, though, that was like, had died around me because I didn't really know anybody, you know, that had died that I knew. And so um, my grandfather died, and I was very, very close to my grandfather, probably the closest of all the grandchildren. And when he passed away, um, it, it was very, very traumatizing to me, and right. I didn't find out until he had already passed away. Oh. And um, so it was like when I went to go, you know, to go back to see him, there was a big fight within the family, and so, you know, it was like my last way of seeing him was him laying on a on a metal, you know, gurney, you know, with a sheet over him. And it, like, traumatized me. So I went back to my grandmother's house, and I laid down on his bed. I did, everybody was mourning and crying, and I just had to, like, get away from everybody. Because, again, being an empath, being around all that, you know, like, will make you go from like normal to want to have a, you know, a mental breakdown, you know, in 2.5 seconds. So I was feeling all this emotion. So I go to the back bedroom and I lay down and literally within, uh, I think a few minutes, I, I guess I fell off and went to sleep. And the next thing I know, I'm a very light sleeper, always have been. The next thing I know, I literally felt my hand raising up. Right. And on its own. And so, like, I my eyes open, and I, like, look to the left, like, to look at my left hand that's raising up into the into the air. And I'm like, you know, you kind of wake it up, like, what's, what's going on? And I look dead in front of me, and I see my grandfather standing there. Oh, as day. Oh, Except wow. He was, he was transparent. I, I mean, I could see it with him, everything, he was there. But then, and all of a sudden, he went, as my hand was lifting up, he put his hand out and went to go and uh, touch my hand, and it was, like, cold, very cold, and it, like, scared me to death, and I screamed, and I jumped up and turned on the light, and when I did that, I didn't see him. Oh, and wow. it troubled me so much that I actually went to my priest. And, yeah. you know, because of again, growing up Catholic, you know, anything right. goes wrong, like you go to the priest, he fixes everything, right? right? right. So <laughs> I go there, like, yeah, and tell me what the heck's going on. And he's like, okay, once again, Christina, here you go, talking about this stuff. But right. in this circumstance, you know, you were probably grieving so much because of, you know, the way you saw him and the fact that you didn't make it there and, and all these things that, you know, he can't, you know, a lot of times they will come back to, you know, visit a loved one to give them information, you know, to tell them that they're okay. And that was, it. and you know, the first, only, last, you know, um, time I ever, you know, had an encounter with, you know, a um, family member. Um, I wish, like you, I think all of us uh, wish that we could interact with our own family members. Wouldn't that yeah. be an amazing thing? But, yeah. you know, for whatever reason, it doesn't work that way. So, you know, um, I take what I, I can, you know, I use my gift, you know, as much as I can to help, you know, those who are in need of it and those that search me out. And believe me, there is always a never-ending amount of people in need. I, I mean, you see it in your group, I see it in my group, and, you know, we don't, we've got such a backlog of of people because we're very, very selective of who we allow to be in the group just because there's now so many fake accounts and people going in to put viruses in groups and, you know, just so much craziness. But, I mean, we've got, I think, like 2,800 people in our group and, it, you know, again, we do some amazing, you know, um, work not only for the paranormal community, not only for people who, you know, are needing, uh, you know, help from either our team or, you know, by getting a reading things like that. But also, we do a lot of giving back in, like, the community. So, you know, it's, it, like I said, how can anybody, you know, like, really listen when people are trying to slam people who are doing this kind of stuff? It, it's kind of backwards to me. It's, it's, it is. And, you know, Christina, I'm sure you had to do it. Um, I had to do it, ban people out of the group because of their foul language or, you know, making yeah. fun of people or calling them fake and stuff. We don't need that drama in our, no. our group. No. And, um, you know, I, I think it's, it's great what you're doing. It's great what anybody's doing to help people out. It's not like, you know, we're asking for anything. Um, 
and the endless hours, like you said, we're constantly, you know, working towards it. And, you know, I got a new lady working, you know, in the group now. Mandy is her name. She's just so amazed, and she loves it. She was a nurse. That's what she was when, you know, she was working. She's a nurse. And, you know, nurses are kind. I always say they're, you know, earth angels, and they help us out by talking and making people feel comfortable, and I'm really happy and proud that I have her, too. So is there, well, um... And I will tell you, I went into your group, you know, um, you were nice enough to to add me to the group, and, you know, I was kind of like scrolling through and looking and things like that, and, you know, um, you can definitely tell um, that you have a lot of people who who truly care about you, and and I will tell you that, you know, it's always nice to to see, and it's always nice that, you know, um, we don't ask for anything monetarily, but you know, um, or any recognition for it. But when, you know, people do really understand us, get to know us, uh, you know, they are are very loyal to us. And I could see that, you know, you had a lot of people who, you know, were right there supporting you. We see a lot of, uh, I saw a lot of people before my laptop went down uh, that were, you know, supporting you in uh, chat. And, you know, um, other than, you know, the, the random, you know, hater that everybody gets once in a while, you know, I mean, Hey, I, the way that I look at it now, because it's been happening for so many years now, um, but it just, at the beginning, it was, like, very upsetting to me. Like, I was just, right. oh, my gosh, what if people right. believe this? And, you know, right. and it was kind of like, you know, and, I mean, it was what they like your heart it. sinks. Your heart sinks. It's like, wait a minute. I'm doing this because I want to help people, and you're calling me this. Why are you calling me this? I didn't call you any names, you know? But it's oh, just no. some people are just, I think sometimes people, and I wish I could help them, sometimes people People are just miserable in their own body, and I, I just wish yes. I could clean, cleanse them and, you know, make them happy again, but it doesn't work that way. I, mean, yeah. I, I will send, you know, healing prayers and energy and all that stuff out, but it, we're going to have them probably the rest of our lives, and I hope when we cross over, you know, everybody's going to have a party for us because I know a lot of them, when they cross over, they get a big celebration. <laughs> this is what they always say. So I think you're doing an amazing job, and I think everybody else does. And um, that uh, that has this ability, and uh, you know, pray for uh, Teresa Caputo. I like her, and uh, you know, I, I pray for her every night because I don't. I, I you know, I read some of the stuff on Facebook what people say about her, and it's a no no in my book. You know, um, I don't want any bashing and stuff like that. So. Oh my gosh, I mean, you know, it's like, again, it's like here, you know, I've been, you know, called a, a scammer. People have said that, you know, I was a murderer. I was on the run. Oh, oh my God, a murderer. Yeah. I'm not one, but two people. And I oh even, <laughs> according oh to them, the, the FBI and everybody have been looking for me for eight years. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty, I can hide in plain sight pretty well. So, you know, but at the very beginning when they were saying this, you know, it was horrible, you know, because I was thinking, yeah. oh, my God, people are going to think I killed people, you know, and they were saying one of them was, yeah. you know, my own family member. So I was like, oh, my God, this is, like, horrible. Oh. And then it was like after a couple of years went by and, you know, and, and these people are still saying, oh, she, you know, the police are still looking for her and everybody sees me on Facebook every day and everybody else can find me, but the so-called, you know, law enforcement can't find me. All they have to do is log on to Facebook, you know, <laughs> you can't find me. <laughs> everybody else does. I haven't seen you on American Most Wanted, so you're okay, honey. No, no, yeah, you know, so I mean, it got really oh, yeah. for a while. But, like, now, you know, it's like now we're, like, eight years out, but, like, every couple of years they, they resurface with, you know, like a, a new twist on the on the story. But, you know, and it was, I, I guess I kind of, like, almost got, you know, into that place where it was almost a little pity party for myself. Like, you know, oh, my gosh, they're being so mean. Like, why would anybody right. do this? And, and I'm thinking, you know, look, I know what I signed up for when I agreed to do this. You know, like, right. this this is what it's going to be like. And then all of a sudden I start seeing all this stuff that's out there about Teresa, and I think, oh, my gosh, you know, like, you know, I'm right. aware celebrity status, so, you know, like that. So I can't even, you know, understand, like, she's so so strong. So I look up, you know, to, to her as well because this is not an easy, yeah. definitely not an easy <laughs> thing to do for sure. So, <laughs> Yeah, 
different, but it's our journey. You know, we were chosen yep. for this journey. That's how I see it. And I always, you know, um, like I said before, I admire people that have that. And I don't want people to just to quit it's just because they're being called fake or whatever else. Um, Absolutely. I, I just want people, because it was given to us. You know, I still believe there is something missing uh, that we were supposed to be told how to use it, but somebody kept it away from us. That's my right. opinion. And right. uh, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so there's something, you know, it's missing. You know, we could live a healthier life, better life, but they took it away from us. So with us coming to life, mediums coming to life, psychic mediums, however you want to call it, uh, coming to life and helping these people out, I believe more and more, even Christians, you know, like Catholic people, anybody, you know, loser, whatever, more and more they're believing in us, and that's that's a great thing, you know. It's, oh, absolutely. I mean, like like you said, it's still taboo in some of the civil areas, but, you know, but we have a lot of, lot of people behind us, and um, more than, you know, people think, and I think that's a great thing. Yeah, I think that, you know, even we ourselves are sometimes blown away by how many people there really are. You know, uh, my radio shows, I mean, when I when I get the numbers, you know, um, of, you know, weekly listeners and, you know, uh, people who are, you know, then listening to the archives, I mean, it completely blows me away because I'm just like, wow, like, there's that many people out there that, like, are listening or, like, care, and, like, they're there every week, every show, and I have three shows that I, I host. So it's it's amazing that there's that big of an audience where people, you know, are out there, they want to hear about this. They want to, you know, know they're not alone. They, you know, want to gain strength in, in like, knowing where to go, you know, if they, they need a reading or, you know, and I think that, you know, I've had a lot of people, and, you know, I absolutely love to, you know, endorse their sites and, and things like that if I feel they're on the up and up and they're good. And, um, again, I was seeing a lot of, you know, the comments on the pages, you know, for the readers and uh, the people were doing the readings. And it was, you know, very, very good. I, I was I was very impressed. And I did like, to the fact that, uh, you know, your guidelines are that people have to basically read and agree to your terms and conditions of being part of the group. Group, and they're required to watch a short YouTube video um, yeah. before they can submit their um, picture uh, and get get a reading. And it was funny that I would see so many people that you know kind of like just figured they could just bypass <laughs> the whole. <laughs> oh yes, we have some. <laughs> it's like it's pinned at the top, okay? You know, it's like everywhere you see it, but you somehow post your picture and then you're mad because it hasn't been read yet. And right. so if you, I, I laugh because, you know, there's no matter how many places you put the rules, there's always a select few that, you know, feel that, it, you know, they don't, uh, you know. Right. And it's, it's quite like as soon as you come in, as soon as you come in, you see the crying angel and it's right underneath that. And right. the video, you know, it will explain to you how we hear, you know, the, the spirit. And it's fast sometimes. People don't understand that. Why can't you get the name? Can't you get that name? And it's so fast sometimes. And I get some of them, I mean, right on. But sometimes I have problems, you know, hearing the names. But it's the way they talk. It's like really, they don't know how they talk. It's so fast in the other dimension that, you know, sometimes we here down here have a hard time hearing it. And uh, some people don't understand. So when you give them a reading, you know, sometimes, you know, if you're you're trying to say, you know, I love you very much and I will going to be together soon. So all of a sudden you hear, love you soon. You know, right. sometimes this is what you hear. So you constantly have to ask in your mind, what are you trying to say? What are you trying to say? You know, repeat that, repeat that. And believe it or not, spirits can sometimes get upset. <laughs> but that's what they'll show me. <laughs> and then they show me signs. They show me signs. And they're like, oh, I know what you're trying to say. So after I do all the readings, then I post it. And then, you know, I usually, I usually have, I think, you know, out of, I don't know how many read. I think I had like two or three. They weren't satisfied because, you know, that person didn't come, but somebody else came. You know, a different spirit came. But it was family. I'm just mm-hmm. happy with whoever comes. You know, but no, they wanted to speak to this person and not this person. Well, I can't help who's coming through. Like I said, this is my pizza. You don't, you know, Dalvin, I'm an order that. 
whatever spirit, you know, you're supposed to, you know, have on, you know, in, in the group, whatever, to read by me. So mm-hmm. it's, it's, uh, it's crazy. I just wish I could tell people this is not, and we do. I mean, I, I put it many times down, you know, some people are like, well, how come, you know, no one has read my photo yet? So we usually tell them, you know, you can't just order it. You know, it doesn't just post come, you know, right. you have to challenge. Somebody has to be able to connect with that, with that yeah. spirit. And that yeah. spirit has to want to connect with who is who is there. Right. And so, I mean, there's a lot of different factors, again, that people don't know. So I think that the idea is, you know, having them have to, you know, watch the video so that they actually know, you know, what to expect from a reading. Right. You know, I have a much better idea. But, you know, my advice always to anybody that, you know, because um, I've had lots of psychics on where there have been people that, you know, uh, have gotten readings and they didn't agree with the readings and so then they want to try to come on, you know, the show or in the chat and try to, you know, talk crap about the guests. Well, you know, my advice to anybody is that if you had a reading and it wasn't what you wanted, the easiest and the best way to, you know, get this all, you know, done and over with is just delete that person, you know, return that person and, you know, go and find somebody else who may be able to give you a reading, you know, and then again, because you're not charging anything, nobody's lost out on anything. Christina, in my group, I don't charge anything. And I'm going to tell you now, I do have a website that I just started. I charge for mediumship $35. That's it. Uh, But it's not something that is, you know, that that you can find. I put my name in there and you can find it. I actually have to give you the website because it's one of those free websites to make yourself. So it's not in the World Wide Web. You you follow what I'm saying? So it's not something that, you know, but I just started that. But, you know, I really, I don't have that much time to read both of them. So I usually, the people that are in my group, I read for them. But they like my reading. They come back and say, you know, and and that was actually their idea. You know, why don't I open up a website, you know, and, and, you know, I'll give you some money for it. I'm like, I don't want no money. But, you know, this is what I do with my money. I'm really involved with bullies and their victims. Um, and I'll tell you some other day what I used to do when I worked. Uh, and I met him really retired because of my heart now, unfortunately, and I really love my job. But um, I usually, that money that I make, it's not much, Christina. I really, it's not much. It's like once, you know, once or twice a week I get somebody that adds cake and I have a private reading because I don't advertise it. It's only in my group, that's it. And uh, I don't put it in papers or whatever. So um, that money that I get, I still close for, you know, uh, school supplies for the children, for the less fortunate. I used to be on the task force that, um, long story short, that, you know, children, young girls who were prostituted, teenage girls, oh, you like, right, my, right. the youngest victim, five years old, you know? And oh. it's just really bad. And um, this is where my money goes. And I don't care what anybody says. They can say, you know, oh, she's spending it on her. No, honey, I'm not. Because, you know, it's been since nine, 2002 is the last time I went to Italy. Because if I was going to spend my money, this is where I was going to go, you know, visiting my mom. Because she's still right. alive. And my grandma is still alive. I would love to hear yeah. before she, you know, passes on. But um, this is what I do with the movie. It's not very much at all. Seriously. I mean, you, you know, later I will give you my site. You can go on my webpage. You can go and see. And normally when people call, you know, for a uh, mediumship reading, they don't just get a mediumship reading. I even give them an angel card reading, too. So they're getting all that for that little bit of money, which the money right. is going to a good cause. So, I, you know, it doesn't... I do a lot for children. Uh, you can ask Star about that. Uh, he, he knows how I am. And um, the children mean the world to me. I met a lot of them that, you know, were starving. I, I, it's a long story, and we don't have that much time. But I help these children out as much as I can. Um, I also have a site. It's called USA Keep Our Children Safe. And uh, it's on Facebook. And, you know, I don't have that many members there because, like, again, I don't advertise it. Right. But, it's not about uh, numbers for you. It's about yeah, exactly. quality it's, of yes. quantity. Right. And there's teachers on there, law enforcement on there. There's all kinds of people on there, and they like to read, or even the posting the pictures and stuff like that. So I do all that stuff just for the children. And like you said, 
most mediums are like really giving and kind. And, and I'm not just bragging about us, okay, but I'm me or whatever. But it's the truth. We're here to give, give, give. And, you know, did I want it to do this radio show? You can ask her. She's like, come on. And I'm like, no, I don't want that. I don't want to talk and brag about myself. But, you know, she meant well. And I really thank her for that. And it's fun, actually. And, you know, meeting you and talking to you. But that's what I do. I mean, people might think, ooh, you know, she's taking, you know, money for herself. And you just can't. I mean, and I can't. I won't. So it's just so. Um, okay, I, I love I love the fact that we were able to have you on, and, you know, if that was ever come up, you know, that that's the explanation out there. I have no problem with people, you know, charging if that's, again, if that's what, you know, what they need to do, you know, or, you know, in your case, you know, you are giving back to, you know, um, your community and you are involved in certain things, and, you know, again... You know, to yes, mediums, they charge three hundred to six hundred dollars, oh, yes. and people are like, "Are you crazy? You're only charging thirty five dollars." I'm like, "I think that's a lot," but <laughs> you know, because I want you to talk about that. money, right? It's exactly. not the money for us. It's exactly. 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 Exactly.
something I, I mean, I do, you know, talk to animals and stuff like that, the spirits, but she sees them. And that, I think that's an amazing gift. So Absolutely. we've been talking about that. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm proud of her. It's like, whoa, you can do that? You kidding me, you know? But she was like, I know you're going to think I'm crazy, you know? And I really all say that. My yeah. Turn. <laughs> yes. And like, she can see animals, like corner eyes. You know, she was telling me how they would come. And I'm like, wow, that's amazing. So, that's, and, and I always encourage children, you know, hey, if you have it, you tell it. I used to play, well, I used to play with friends. They, they were not, in, you know, imaginary friends. They were my spirit friends. They were kids right out. Nobody could right. see them, but I saw them. You know, after a while, my parents found out that she's really talking to somebody. You know, in the house that we lived in, I was talking to Lucy. Lucy was a spirit child that passed away, and that was her house. And I was talking yeah. to Lucy. She was my, you know, she was my friend forever. Right. So, what we, you know, what we understand now as adults is, you know, something that we don't understand is, is children. You know, is that there are spirits, in, you know, everywhere. It's in the holy houses and, and things like that. They're, they're everywhere. And, you know, the, the more connected, you know, you are, the more they're going to be try to interact with you, you know, which, right. again, right. you know, because of TV and everything, everybody gets freaked out right away thinking it's like something after them to kill them, you know, so... Again, by educating and, and talking about these, you know, stories, because, of course, you know, people who, you know, have experienced all kinds of, you know, um, paranormal activity, you know, throughout their life or, you know, seeing different things, stuff like that, it, it is because they, they do have abilities. Right. This is over and over. And, you know, you know again, I don't, my oldest one, I said, did not, you know, he, he has abilities. And my youngest one is like your daughter. My youngest one, uh, my oldest one is uh, 28. My youngest one is 20. <laughs> and um, she oh. actually has abilities as well. And, you know, with my older one, I really didn't talk about it as much because during, like, the time when they were growing up, it was still, like, a time where, like, you could have your kids taken away from you, like, lose the right. custody they, of them because of it. Right. 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 Yeah, because they think you're nuts or something like that. Yeah. And that's, um, you know, exactly what they were trying to, like, use against me, you know, saying I was crazy and stuff like that. And so, you know, it was a time. So we really didn't talk about it. But, of course, you know, when my son reported, you know, about my grandfather, it was like I knew at that point. Um, right. And my That's my amazing. Point, I wish I could have seen my dad, you know, with my eyes. But I heard him. It's amazing, too. But you actually saw your grandfather. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and, and again, it was the first and the only family member, you know, that I ever, you know, that ever came to me to see me. I did see, you know, uh, my grandfather again, and and a, a boyfriend that I uh, that had died, um, and some other, you know, family members and stuff that I didn't know about at the time when I had a near death right. experience. But you know, that's the only one that like, came to me, you know, and I had an interaction with. Uh, so and. But I, as over the years that I've, you know, been researching and stuff, you know, you, you, I'm finding that that's not that uncommon. You know, um, psychic mediums usually don't have, you know, interactions. Like, they can't connect with their own family members. They can connect with other people's family members. But, you know, if they do tend to be very connected with somebody and, you know, it's like they do miss, uh, like, the death or, you know, there's it's weighing on them very heavily, um, a lot of times they will, you know, try to make their presence, you know, known so that, you know, they can give you that sign. So it was pretty amazing that your grandfather, I mean, that your father, you know, was able to give you that sign from the other side and, and you know, and, and also for your mother, you know, because, right. again, who would have known about that key? I love that story. Right. I know. It's, it, and, you know, I believe it or not, I did the same thing like you did. I, I, w I went to the preacher. <laughs> it's not right for me. You got me here this, you know. And, uh, I mean, I'm remarried again, but my husband was like, you need to talk to somebody because he wasn't used to this because I kept it away from him, too. Right. You know? Right. But he's like, oh, my God, after this, and more and more, you know, I go to a restaurant and eat and, you know, and there is a spirit once we could give a message. You know what I do sometimes? I just... You know, wait till they get up from the table to go to the restroom or something like that. And then follow the 
no. I write while I'm eating. I write whatever the spirit is telling me. Then I write it, and then I give it to, you know, I lay it right there on their, you know, uh, table and stuff like that, and then I go home. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, it's like, you know, like a couple of times I stay and watch and see what their reaction is, you know, and then like, they're like, oh, my God, that's all you hear, and then crying, and then I leave. Because I don't let right. people cry. <laughs> I don't want people to cry. It kills me. So, um, yeah, that's just me. Like I well, said, I do you, do, you also do the um, angel readings, correct? Yes, I do. I do an angel card reading, um, and we have other admins in, like Shirley. Uh, she does angel card reading in Star. She does angel card reading in the group as well. So, um, yes, we do. Now, for those who don't, you know, aren't familiar with angel card readings, um, you know, can you give a little bit of background of what they are and what yeah, they entail? It, like, the cards that I have is from uh, Doreen Bircher. Um, I have the fairy, and I have um, St. Michael, uh, Archangel uh, Michael, and uh, I got several of them. It's a card deck, and, uh, like, if I do a personal reading, um, you know, I let the people shovel, the person shovel the card, and they have to think about, you know, one question. I just say, just think about something which you want the cards to answer you, you know. Uh, sometimes they say love life and stuff like that, but most of the times they want to know about life in general. And I do the three cards reading because this is the fastest one, and, um, you know, it's past, present, and future. And, uh, and then, you know, we, we pull the cards, and I lay them down, and then I explain to them, you know, the first card, what that means, because it has always a little meaning in the bottom, and then you have to tell them what you're seeing, you know, when you do the angel card reading. And the same thing, when we do it in the group, it's just going to be one card. So usually, because, you know, we have so many members, we usually say the first 20 that answer will get an angel card. And then, oh, my God, then you get, like, so many. And saying, I want one, I want one. And I know they all want one. So, and, and then we read for people. We pull a card. Um, and then I have two ladies do that because I'm too busy reading, you know, mediumship. So, um, and then they write down what the card, you know, means and stuff like that. And, and that's what they get. Um, and it's, it's, uh, and the messages are from the angels. And that's where I get, you know, to talk to them. And you send them. And, um, you know, they, they talk. There's, you know, this is talking to us just like the spirit. It's just a wonderful feeling when you do it. You know, I used to do tarot when I was younger. And I did it, oh, my gosh, for a long, long time. But it just, I was just, just getting bored with that. It just, you know, and I'm not knocking tarot down, you know, the tarot card. Um, it's just, it was not for me. And when I got, uh, you know, to hear about Doreen Bircher, um, it was just, her cards are amazing, and I'm sure there's others out there, but that's the cards that I use, and it just gives you, you know, the sense of peace when you read these cards, and, uh, and in the peaceful message, there's no ugly messages, there's, you know, you're going to die tomorrow message, so it's just a really nice peaceful message right on the spot, even explains how the person feels, because you're reading to the person, so right. and, and by me seeing, you know, one specific card, I know exactly what the person is going through. But, of course, I sense he's sitting right there or he's sitting right there. I sense what they're going through. You know, I hold their hands and I feel their emotion even, emotion, you know, tremendously. And sometimes I have to cry and that's just, ugh, I hate doing that. But it's just because I feel it, I sense it. Right, you have to release that energy as well. Right, one of my friends, her husband, her fiance, I'm sorry, died. They were supposed to get married, uh, you know, New Year's Eve, this was a few years ago, and uh, she was pregnant, and he died. And, you know, she lost her husband, so we gave her a baby shower, and um, she stood right next to me, and I heard him tell her, I'm sorry, tell her I'm sorry. Well, this was... This was at a church. They were having a, you know, in the basement. They were having a baby shower, and here I'm talking about yes, people do I can do that in that church. Right. Because, you know, and I'm like, oh my God, don't do this to me. You know, I just can't say no, not right now, not right now. And you know, you just say, please tell her I'm so sorry. When she said, when she was, she was really close to me, and I felt her belly, and you know, I, I just. 
felt the energy, you know, from her, from the baby. And then I said, I need to talk to you. I need, you know, come with me in the kitchen. And, of course, you know, this is her baby shower, and I'm making her ball. But she felt so much better after then. So much better. And even, you know, the reading, you know, why, you know, why did he, you know, pass away? Well, he got in the college. But why did he get in the college? He was trying to get the phone dropped, and I told her the phone dropped, and he dialed her number, and, you know, that's when the call, you know, he crashed. And right. he knew, she said, I just knew it because, you know, he took a driver and stuff like that. I mean, how do I know these things? Because they're telling me, you just can't make this stuff up. It's impossible. It's impossible. Right. You know, um, I even knew, you know, everything, every little detail, what he did that night, what he said to her on the phone. She was like, oh, my God, this is freaking me out. Stop it. You know, that's what she would say at first. But then she was so relieved. She said, I can finally move on. Um, yeah, right. And that's what's important. You know, I mean, again, a lot of people don't, you know, um, see the full aspect of, you know, what we do or they don't understand what it is that we do. And I think that, you know, um, that's why our clients and the people that we do read from that, you know, have these amazing, amazing readings with us, you know, stand, stand so strongly behind us is because, you know, again, the information that is given them, given to them is so powerful that, you know, it helps people heal, it helps them move on, you know, it gives them their life back. I mean, a simple message, you know. So, you know, again, we'll we'll continue to stay strong and, and do what we're supposed to do. I mean, I'm starting, as I get, again, as I get older, to realize that, you know, hey, if, you know, they're not talking about us, then, you know, we're obviously we're not doing something right because, you know, <laughs> if they're constantly, we're on their mind, you know, we're, we're doing something. Somebody's paying attention. Right. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. You know, like so, I said, if people don't like our group, yours or mine, you know, there's always the exit door. We'll rush oh, yeah. it out. Oh, you don't have to sit in there and, you know, take supposedly our punishment to you. you know, why am I not reading in the group but I can read, you know, the case group, uh, my, my website? It's because you only have so many days and you have to read it before you get refunded the money, first of all. But I do back and forth, back and forth. That's how I do my reading. But I have others that help me read in that group, so I don't have to be always, you know, be attached to the group, which I really am. Which is great. Right. Right. I mean, you can only do so much. I mean, you know, I don't care what people say. I really don't. It just, um, I, really, it just, you know, brings you down to listen to these people, but then when they're in the group, they're really nice and, you know, oh, thank you so much for your reading, but then, you yeah, they're bashing you on this radio show. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. really, you want to be this ignorant to do that? But, you know, I will pray for you. That's all I can do. I will pray yeah. for you. But, you know, again, I, we have to remember that the the ratio of the satisfied, you know, clients compared to the few that don't get the information that they, again, preconceivedly, you know, expected um, is very, is very low. You know, I mean, there's a big difference between it, you know. And, again, I saw the, the support and the love that, you know, your members of your group have for you. And, you know, again, that speaks volumes for, for people. And I always say, because, you know, there's always on um, Facebook, there's always so much gossip and people are always trying oh, to bob yeah. you down instead of, you know, bringing yeah. them up. I mean, it's, it, it just gets so bad. I, I think, you know, I feel like we're back in high school and I didn't do this crap in high school, oh, but yeah. I really don't want to do it, yeah. you know, as right, an adult, exactly. like really. I know. Um, you know. You know. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Okay. So the, the thing, you know, what I'm trying to say, I mean, I'm reading some of the stuff here, you know, why can't she uh, do a reading, you know, a tape reading but not a, a Facebook reading? Hello, the readings are free. Be grateful that you only have to wait another day before your card or, or your, you know, photo comes on here. It's a free reading, but people are so ungrateful, Christina. And yes. it's really yes. disappointing. I mean, you know, sometimes I sit there like, why did I open up this room? Why? And then yep. you have you know, Phyllis or Shirley or, you know, uh, 
other thing because people need you guys. People need yes. you here. You know, yes. you know, people like that, when you read this stuff, it's like, are you kidding me? You know, come on, grow up. Uh, if you don't like it, go somewhere else. Pay $600, $700 for a mediumship reading. I don't care. But if you, Absolutely. You know, or go and get another free reading. Exactly. If, if you can find, if people have to remember, too, that not all psychics are, are for each person. You know, right. I mean, there are sometimes people, you know, just don't, you know, clash or, you know, somebody might not pick up a very strong energy from somebody. You know, again, for me, when I do a reading, now, my strongest way to do a reading would be, obviously, in person. Second, right. you know, strongest that I will do is if you, you live out of state or something like that, I would like to either do the reading over the phone or uh, by Skype. You know, because right. I like to be able to, like, see somebody when I'm talking to them and, you know, uh, look at their body language as far as, uh, uh, and their, and how their, uh, their energy that they're, they're giving off to the reading. Now, if I can't, you know, do that, um, I, I've also done readings where I've gotten, a, you know, somebody will send me a picture, you know, no background or anything. They'll just send me a picture, and then I just learn whatever I get from it, I get from it. That's, and that's then, right. again, yeah. there's other times when people will send me a question through, you know, uh, Facebook or, or through private message, and they'll just ask me a question, and, you know, I'll pick something up. But, again, it's not like a direct connect to the other side, people. Like, you can't just call, you know, or go onto a Facebook page and say, hey, by the way, I want to talk to, you know, uh, Uncle Tommy to them right now, and, right. you know, one of them can just walk in and say, okay, Uncle Tommy, I need, you know, so-and-so wants to talk to you, come forward. It doesn't work that way. Right. So That's these psychics right. actually have to sit there and they have to focus on some of them, you know, will have to focus on that picture so that they are targeting that the correct person to come exactly. through. And sometimes they will get it. Sometimes, you know, Uncle Tony might not want to come through. You might not want to talk, you know. I mean, who knows? But, again, people have to remember that these things are, are for free and people are doing it out of the, you know, the goodness of their own heart. And so, you know, you've got to be patient. And, you know, just like we're saying, I mean, there are plenty of groups out there that, you know, are for people who don't believe or want to hate on other people. I mean, they're, they're swarming. You can run right. hundreds of them. You know, oh, I know. gladly let you join their group. You know, don't waste right. time of people that, you know, don't. If you really want a reading, great. Be thankful for whatever messages you get, even if right. it's not answering your questions. And we get people sometimes in my group that will get a reading uh, from somebody and, you know, they weren't able to, you know, they got a lot of information, but they didn't actually right. get the question that they were looking for answered. And so right. a lot of times I'll have somebody else, you know, uh, offer to do the reading and see if possibly they can, you know, possibly get something. Um, because, again, you don't really want to, you know, be giving a psychic a whole lot of information. You want, you know, for them exactly. to... Exactly. You know, because it's kind of your damned if you do, you damned if you don't. You know, it's like if they want specific information, you know, and they tell you what they want, then they can cry foul saying, oh, well, they knew what I wanted to hear. Right. And this is this is why we post, you know, we say we only need to pick, I don't know if you went in there, you know, how to post a photo. It's, we want yes. the year that the person died. We don't even want their birthday because a lot of psychics go by their birthday. No, we want the year when the person died. Uh, you know, some, some on write the whole thing. But just, we really just want the year. We want a photo and, you know, who the person is to you. But that we really don't need it. Surely make that up. But, and, you know, what's your question before, you know, because, yeah, I used to do the reading like I do a personal reading, you know. But so you'll get so much information person. and they'll be going back and forth with you forever, you know. Exactly. <laughs> and I can't do that, you see. And that's why we just do whatever we we're good right. without asking them any. See, this is the, the good thing about this. We don't ask to sit or anything. We just write it down like Deborah does, like Shirley does, like I do. We just write down what we're getting, and bang, we send it. And then, if you're looking at, on, on my uh, Facebook, uh, in my Facebook group, then the sitter the next day or maybe right away, whatever, whenever they get the message, 
they, you know, they come and say, oh, my God, I can't believe she told you about this or that and that. She didn't give me the information, people. How can I lie about it? And, again, we always tell the members, make your, and I hope they're listening to me right now, make your Facebook private because there are fake readers, but I'm not one of them. And I'm not going to justify, and I'm not going to sit here and, you know, whatever. I don't care what people think. I told you that before. Um, yeah, in the beginning I heard. It really did because I'm like, I'm doing this, you know, just to help out, to bring peace in the heart. But here you have some really rude people, you know, they, yes. they, jump, yes. your, they jump your throat like, rah, you know, it's like, are you kidding me? Or whatever. So make your private, make your Facebook private. Nobody can sneak in there, snoop in there, make your pictures private, everything private. You know, you right. don't, it's just hard. It's like, we don't need that. I don't need that. I, there's a picture for me. It's because I want to see if I'm talking to the right students. That's it. Bottom right. Line. But again, I mean, I don't see anything wrong with that because, again, every reader is completely different. And again, if you do have a picture, you know, um, it's even, it's like another, you know, aspect of energy that you can you can use off of. It's just like if, you know, somebody comes to me and I do a reading in, in person with them. Like if um, they have a, you know, an object, something that might belong to the person that they want to connect with. You know, right. that definitely helps me to connect with that person as well. So, you know, everybody is different. People have to understand that. You know, it's not, you know, somebody doesn't just walk in. And, and, I mean, people have this strange idea of, you know, how a psychic reading even works. And, right. you know, again, they're, they're misunderstanding, mis, you know, uh, they're really not educated in, you know, how this all works. And so people have this idea that, you know, you're supposed to walk into a real psychic opposed to a fake psychic. You know, right. you just walk into them, you know, and then they're going to be able to give you all this information that you're going to be able to verify and validate. Right. You know, and right. if you, but again, if you can have somebody who's really, really good and they can, you know, answer nine out of the ten questions that you ask, or you want to get information, but because one of them you did not get, you will right. be able to claim that right. you're a fake. Right. And, and you can tell the difference from a fake to a real medium. A fake asks a lot, a lot of questions, like you said, yes. but a real medium won't ask. They just tell you, and that's it. You can answer, or you can put your input later, and this is how we read. We just write it down. Christina, you saw how I read. I'm sure you right. looked through some of my readings. I just right. put everything on there. I don't ask any questions, and then the people the next day, like I said, or the same day, they give me their, you know, they give me their validation. Yeah, this is true. Yes, this happened. You know, how can you be safe by doing that? I'm not asking anything. I'm not drawing, you know, I'm not taking that out of you. I'm not, you know, weasel the information out of you. You know what I mean? No, um, you're connecting and you're getting a, bu a download of a bunch of information which you're then relaying. Right, exactly. And so, that's really how it works. But, yeah, I, I again want to commend, you know, what you and your, your group do because, you know, you. there are so many people, you know, that are so severely affected after the loss of a loved one. Yes. And I will tell Very you much. that sometimes just, you know, the the ability to be able to connect on even a spiritual, you know, level just to have a message, you know, so that that person can feel that connection again because, you know, we are, you know, we want everything as a, you know, we want everything to be something that we can touch, something tangible, something we can touch and we can feel, you know, right. and exactly. so our, our memories and, our, and all of that, like, you know, then kind of fade, like those aren't important, but those are what are, you know, the most right. important because those are our connections, you know, and, right. and those connection with our energy of those people. And so, to be able to get those messages sometimes will bring a person out of a severe depression. It exactly. will change their mind on exactly. suicide. Like, exactly. You know, so I get it. Like, I still get it, and I feel like, you know, people give readings for all different reasons. But right. giving readings for people who are grieving, especially over, you know, the loss of a loved one, I, I think is you know, up there on the priority, you know, tier is, like, you know, very high up there because, right. again, these simple messages can do so much. Right. right, and we're doing that, you know, just to help people out. We're not doing it to hurt people. You're never going to see a bad reading, never, ever going to see a bad reading in the group. Um, 
you know, it's just my heart goes out to everyone that lost a loved one, you know. Um, a boy, I hate, you know, I just like when I see little children, you know, the mother or the father want an answer. It, it just kills me. I mean, it's just, oh, God. You know, then I had some readings that, you know, somebody comes through and he's taking all my energy, which I protect myself, but sometimes the right. protection doesn't help. And then you're starting to sweat and your arm, you know, your hands are swelling up, mind you. And it's yep. like, oh, my God, i got to get out of here. It's so hot. And I tell my husband, turn the air conditioning on. <laughs> you know, yep. he's still taking all my energy. And after that, I can tell I'm just, you know, headaches and I'm just drain and you know I have a lot of a lot of good members and, and thanks to all my um, administration in, in uh, my group uh, that help out that appreciate us you know I don't think we're doing a bad job we have you know since mid January this group has been growing over 5,600 people and they're all appreciated you know what I mean now, of course we ban some people out of the room because they were rude not just call people names and yes they will get kicked out. I mean, would you happen? To, I mean, I see you on your texting, you know, you have a lot of people, you know, they're getting booted, you know, because they're being rude. They can be rude all they want. Just don't worry about it. I forgive them. Yeah, I just keep on praying for them. That's all I can do. And that's about what we do in our group. Uh, you know, we usually have people make sure that somebody's not using a fake account. And I don't do that. I only do the reading. So I have, right. you know, the, the, the people that don't, they're not readers do that. And I would be Phyllis and Mandy, they check people, you know, if, if they're fake accounts and stuff like that. But right. we, the reader, don't do that. So they tell us, okay, this and this and this photo, if you guys get a check, you know, if you guys get any information that can be read, and that's how we do it. Right. Well, it's because I don't have time. Christina, I don't have time to snoop around everybody's Facebook and just get the information. I just don't have time. I would never read as many as I do, you know, in right. a day. I would not have time. Again, what would you, I mean, what would you get Same out of from it, you know? Exactly. I mean, from again, you're, you're doing these things for free, you know, for people. So it's not, you know, yes. it's not doing anything for you either if you did it or you didn't. It's, I mean, obviously it's a, it's a benefit because there's a lot of people in that group. There's a lot of people, you know, who are looking for reading and things like that. But, okay. you know, again, I think that it's, it's great that we, you know, are ending the, the show uh, on a positive note on, you know, all the positive things that, you know, do come out of, you know, um, right. studies, doing readings and, you know, offering free readings for, you know, even those who would maybe not ever get one because, right. in fact, they can't afford one. Right. So I think you know, that it's, it's great that that's a, right. available to them. You, you know, um, we have even members, they're just members, but they love to read the reading. That's it. They don't want to read. They want to read the yeah. reading. Yeah, it's comfort to them, and we get that told all the time, you know. I don't want a reading, uh, you know, Alexa, so I don't want a reading, fellas. I just want to tell you guys, you know, how great, and it's really comfort to me. I sit here in my living room, you know, alone, because, you know, their spouse died or whatever. Right. And, you know, it's just such a comfort to read the, the messages from, you know, your loved ones. So, and, and you never, it's, 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 yeah, you never know how you'll, how somebody will, and, you know, it'll be affected. So, that, that's great. So, all right, we're coming up on the last couple minutes of the, the show. Um, I want to again say thank you so much for, for coming tonight. Um, you want to give out uh, the where to find your Facebook group and how to contact you if they're interested in uh, talking to you or getting a reading? Right. Um, the, the Facebook group is um, heal, um, Help. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> healing Grief. Oh, my God. I forgot my Facebook, uh, Facebook group. It's called uh, Healing Grief with Help from the Other Side. And the picture, the profile picture on that would be a uh, client angel. You know, she's leaning over, black hair, long hair, and I believe it's like a purple background or something like that, a purple dress. So that is the size, and it's free reading. And uh, it's a closed group, by the way. It's a closed group. So no one, you know, on your Facebook, any family members that you don't want them to know that you're having a reading, they can't see what we're talking about in that group. So it's a closed group. You have to be invited or, you know, um, administration has to bring you in. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be on your, um, what is it called? Um, oh, uh, feedback. You know, uh, oh my gosh. Can you believe it? My mind is going blank. <laughs> but, it, it, you know, 
you're going to see that what the readings are all about, like in your uh, news feed. That's what I'm going to say. Sorry, sorry, I'm trying to hold it. But no one else can see it unless you're a member in your group. Great. So, great. And it's called All Right, Ellen Grief with help from the other side. All right. And we'll absolutely uh, put that link on our Facebook page as well. So if anybody uh, would like to join that group and miss that, we'll put the link on the Paranormal Connections page as well. I'll put it on my uh, personal page and we will get it out there and go and check out our group. But like I said, some amazing, amazing women uh, and readers in that group and just a great all around uh, what they're trying to do. So we always like to promote and, and back, you know, uh, other people who are just like us. So uh, I want to say thank you again to our guests. Thank you so much to all of our listeners. You guys have been so patient with, you know, everything that's been going on. And I had to take a little uh, hiatus from the show, but I am back. And we've got a great month ahead of all kinds of amazing, amazing guests. So make sure to check us out next week. Also, check us out uh, Wednesday. I'll be with uh, Renee Charles. Is and myself will be co-hosting Alien UFOs and Beyond. Uh, same time, uh, 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time and 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll see everybody next week. Once again, thank you all. Good night. Thank you for having me. I hope it wasn't too too <laughs> hard. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Oh, that's a good. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye bye.